Yes, he's been bankrupt a million times. He's been punched in the face by Mike Tyson and he's even been shot. But around a decade ago, he was double dead and buried, completely washed away by the new boy on the block, the fresh and brash arrival of the one and only Eddie Hearn. Yes, Edward dominated the scene with Sky Sports, a mega stable of talent, and of course the stars aligned with the force of the commercial powerhouse and heavyweight sensation Anthony Joshua. Frank Warren and Queensbury was becoming ancient history. Their day seemed to be numbered. But... Roll on present day and cripple my nipples how the landscape has drastically changed. Frank Warren has risen from the dead once again and it seems that the Eddie Hearn show is now on its own downward transition. But how the ruddy hell did this happen? Well, this is how. Let's rewind a little bit. So everybody knows old Frank Warren, don't they? He affirmed his name in the 20th century as the king of British boxing promotion. He began his journey with his second cousin and double hard nut Lenny McLean who asked him to promote his own unlicensed bouts in the late 70s. Frank thought about it and eventually said yes, but I mean, yeah, look at him, you're not going to fucking say no, are you? Bloody hell. Anyway, it spiralled on from this point and throughout the 80s and 90s, he was working with the biggest names in boxing history. From Mike Tyson himself to that absolutely colossal Bell and Don King and promoted some of the biggest fights in those eras as well. He, of course, had tough times and competition along the way, but the resilient Frank, even after being bankrupt, even after being shot, always bounced back to keep a firm hold on the British scene, all the way up until the turn of the century. However, this is when things suddenly started to change. It was the dawn of a new era. The digital age was upon us and social media had become a phenomenon. Before we knew it, we were tweeting, we were writing on Facebook walls, flicking through some random birds, holiday albums, Magaloo 2010, Jennifer's Hendu, LOL, looking for the bikini pics, wanking our fucking lives away. Yes, sorry. Anyway, communication changed and we were now interacting via a screen keeping up to date and reading our news via the mobile blower and those who didn't roll at the times were about to be left behind. Frankie Boy unknowingly was about to be one of them. One man who did move with the times however was Frank's promotional enemy's young ambitious boy Essex born Eddie Hearn who emerged on the scene in 2009 and was about to throw some verjazzled shit at the fan. Now of course just prior to this Frank was still doing alright but with the arrival of Mick Hennessy on the scene as well as Frank Maloney, now Kelly Maloney. Yes, Frank Maloney still going strong. It made it hard for Frank to stay on top and he found added struggles with broadcasters. So in a nutshell, he told Sky Sports, the king of British sports broadcasting, to stick it up their arse and decided to set up Box Nation in 2011, a free-to-air boxing channel where he could control and broadcast his epic fight cards to dedicated subscribers. Then he started to charge a tenner for it and a lot of people went, nah, fuck off, you're alright. But a few people did hang about. Now Eddie Hearn around this time had just tried to convince the world that Audley Harrison could beat David Hay. So Frank probably thought, well that's the last we'll see of him. He said Audley beats David Hay. What's he fucking talking about? Do me a favour, shoulder roll bosh. Frank weren't worried at all. But Edward was being underestimated, and as his stable grew, Matram began making waves. They signed an array of talent, they used social media to their benefit, and they consumed the primetime Saturday night spot for weekly shows. They even poached some of Frank's fighters who saw the glitz and glamour of Sky and Matram, the likes of Tony Bellew, Ricky Burns, and Long Ed De Gale, plus many more. And just to stick the knife in even further, whereas Frank in 2012 put on the biggest British show in a number of years, over 30,000 fans at Upton Park for Hay vs Chisora, Eddie went and blasted him out of the water with 80,000 fans at Wembley Stadium for Frotch Groves 2, a show that also happened to feature a man who was fast becoming a superstar, Anthony Joshua. Now just prior to Frotch Groves, Frank saw his empire slipping away, so him and Box Nation tried to fight back, reluctantly joining forces with Ricky Hatton, Amir Khan, Kelly Maloney and Barry McGuigan to air their shows on his channel as well. He also struck up some relationships with American broadcasters and featured the mega names such as Floyd Mayweather and Pacquiao. But there was a big problem. This was all losing money. And as Box Nation struggled to keep their paying audience, as his stable began to dwindle and Frank Warren promotions allegedly accumulated losses of 4.36 million around 2013, Matram went from strength to strength and Frank's shoulder was going fucking mental. The years on from 2015, Eddie signed an exclusive six-year deal with Sky and 
Anthony Joshua reached those superstar heights. Matchroom shows had a glitz and glamour feel about them whilst Frank was still stuck behind the paywall of Box Nation. He was still putting on decent shows to be fair to him and airing some great American shows such as Canelo vs Golovkin, but they never had the wide reach of Sky Sports and with Frank trailing miles behind in terms of the social media presence Matchroom had, it looked as though he just couldn't adjust and the writing was on the wall for the legendary promoter. Then, in 2017, when Anthony Joshua became unified heavyweight champion by beating Klitschko at a sold-out Wembley, Eddie's matchroom were the leading boxing promoter in Britain, and it seemed like nothing could stop them. But, things then slowly began to take a turn. Out of nowhere, BT Sports emerged on the boxing scene and took on Box Nation. More importantly, they signed a deal with Frank to air Queensbury shows. Frank said, don't you want to keep putting them on Box Nation? They said, no, fuck that, you've only got about 10 subscribers. And Warren said, all right, fair dinkum. And in 2018, a relatively well-known heavyweight champion put pen to Frank's paper to air his comeback with BT Sports, which nearly was a fairy tale ending at the end of the year. The next year, however, Anthony Joshua lost lost his world titles to Eric Cartman. The first blemish on his record. Eddie did bounce back though, striking a $100 million deal with the Saudis for a rematch where AJ revenged the loss, keeping them on top. But the AJ train was showing some vulnerabilities. And uh, yeah, Frank weren't happy about that rematch by the way, so he slated Ruiz for his weight gain in an article he titled, Ruiz has got to take it on the chins. Good old Frankie boy. Anyway, Tyson's profile then went from strength to strength and he finally did get that fairy tale ending by defeating the Bronze Bomber. Frank, after many years, finally had a heavyweight champion on his roster once again and things were about to get even more interesting when in 2021, Matra made a very bold move, shocking everyone with a surprise transition to DAZN, a subscription-based channel mostly dedicated to boxing at the time, almost reminiscent of Box Nation, but with the the intentions of being a little less shit. It was a monumental decision by Eddie to leave behind Sky, who had been such a big part of their success, but he had his sights set on global domination. However, things got off to a very rough start when out of nowhere, AJ lost to the Ukrainian genius Yusik. Simultaneously, Fury retained his belt in another epic war with Wilder, broke records with a mandatory against Dillian White in a 90,000 sold out Wembley Stadium, and AJ went on to lose to Yusik again. Then went fucking mental with the mic, yeah, I'm not 14 stone, am I? I'm heavy, don't know what's going on, it's not nice, bosh, the belts went flying, it weren't a good look, and his profile took a bit of a battering. Eddie and DeZone needed something to salvage their rough year, and he had just the thing. Who better to save DeZone's day than Eddie's only other superstar, the son of a legend, Connor Ben, facing off against Chris Eubank Jr. and ah, oh, fucking hell. Eddie was left with egg on his face. Not because of Connor, but you know what I mean. Anyway, as we fast forward through 2023, the Connor Ben scandal is still ongoing and unforgiven. And in a strange turn of events, fighters have now left Matram left, right and centre, just as they did to Frank all them years ago, with some even joining Queensbury. But worst of all, AJ's tentative return has shown a struggle to sell out the O2, when at one point he was selling out Wembley regularly, and Eddie's ties to Saudi seem unable to come through with the mega money fight, leaving Matram at a bit of a stalemate. However, one man has managed to make them huge Saudi deals. He's cut out the middleman and gone straight for the jugular. Hello Turkey, me old son, fancy a bit of Gypsy King at your little festival? Yes, I fucking do, he said. 100 million sandals? All right, yes, let me get the checkbook out, brother, and bosh, he's managed to land the most financially lucrative Saudi paydays for two mega heavyweight fights in the unprecedented Riyadh season. And that man is, of course, Frank Warren. So in a nutshell, how the fucking hell did he manage to do all that? Fair bloody play. So in a way, it all seems to have come full circle. It seems to be a mirror image of Frank's difficult box nation times back then, reflecting in Eddie and DeZone's difficult times currently. Don't get me wrong, DeZone are still cracking it with the old Miss tits, and Eddie's still putting on crackers like Wood Warrington. But it would seem the big boy shit, the money makers, yes, the heavyweight spectacles have all been consumed by Frank and Tyson of late. And and ultimately, it's amazing how it's all transitioned from 2017. Eddie and AJ will need something big to turn it all around. But unfortunately, it seems like a long way off. 
Never underestimate old Frankie boy, the bounce back king. Here he is. Fuck him. Yes, don't forget to check out the podcast with me and the chaps. We don't know what the fuck we're talking about, but we love it. Hope it gives you a giggle. Nighty night. Bye.